Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to First United Church of Christ on what appears to be a glorious Sunday morning. It's an exciting Sunday for us because of the opportunity to uh, baptize a, a new child into Christ Church. I'm so happy to have Zoe Page with us and uh, we'll celebrate that in just a few minutes as well as the opportunity to participate in the Lord's Supper. I believe before we get started, however, Sue, we'd like to share a few words. Thanks, Sue. You've been running that program for us for quite a few years. I'm proud to say my son, Thomas Disease, did not check in this morning, so I finally did remember the prayer, re prayer request sheet, and Carl doesn't have to deliver it to me. But uh, there are some congratulations to share, and uh, the congratulations certainly are to the Cook family. They've got a, a, a great a great grandson, so we have a great grandmother here. We now have a great grandson born to, into the Cook family, and uh, with Irish name Finnegan is his first name, Finnegan Samuel. So we can rejoice in that. Uh, John Amato called me last evening, and uh, his daughter Victoria is in St. Luke's Hospital. Uh, we certainly keep Tom Adams and his wife. Tom was a former pastor in Easton and a very active person in this community. And uh, Sue Disbert told me this morning that uh, Walter Granwell passed away, and so we, we keep that family in our prayers as well. Are there any other announcements for us to, uh, to share this morning? Then uh, let us please stand for our call to worship. A new song, a song of Lent. Arise ye from our life together. A song of praise. Redeeming our tragedies and celebrating our triumphs. A song of joy. To God who rebels in our uniqueness and delights in our calmness. A love song. To God, who tends the wounds of the heart, who restores hope and despair, who brings light into the darkness and blesses us each day. Our first name is Lift High the Cross, number 198, verses 1, 3, and 5.
May we, come, may we come before our loving God, confessing our sins and seeking forgiveness. Creator, passionate God, you delight to shape the world in beauty and harmony. You invite us to participate in the balance of creation. We grow in wisdom as our experience unfolds. We take good learning out of difficult situations, yet also find our well-meant endeavors leading to unintended consequences. Too often we give in to temptation that disrupts the joyous, chaotic order of the universe. We cannot undo all our mistakes, but we can turn once more to the living presence of Jesus and find new ways to live and love each other and the earth. Do not let our hearts be fearful, but let us in silence acknowledge our sin and seek the forgiveness that restores your peace. The good news is that even as Adam and Eve faced the consequences of their sin, our God prepared a way for them still to be connected to the earth and to the living presence of God. So it is with all of us in Christ's life, ministry and death and resurrection, we are made able to per persist upright and strong, for our sins are forgiven. And <laughs> child into Christ Church. We do that in celebration today with the baptism of Zoe Page. Remember those words from Scripture? They were bringing children to Jesus that Jesus might touch them. And the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, Jesus was indignant. And he said to them, let the children come to me. Do not hinder them, for to such belongs the realm of God. Truly I say to you, whoever did does not receive the realm of God like a child shall not enter into it. And then Jesus took them in his arms and blessed them, laying his hands upon them. Yes, the parents and sponsors of Zoe Page to please join me at the baptismal font. Follow along with our program this morning. Let's read, let's read responsibly. As we come to this font of living water, let us recall the meaning of baptism. Jesus said, unless we are born anew, we cannot see the reign of God. Unless we are born of water and the Spirit, we cannot enter God's new order. Through our baptism, we join in the death and resurrection of Jesus, releasing the ways of the world and beginning a new life in Christ. In new life, we uplift the image of God in all our being. Together in the Spirit, we are the body of Christ. Thy kingdom come. Isn't she pretty? Oh, the family are black, sorry. <laughs> So do you as parents and sponsors. Do you desire to have this daughter baptized for the faith and family of Jesus Christ? If so, answer, we do. We do. We would encourage your child to renounce the powers of evil and to receive the liberating wholeness of new life in Christ. If so, we will with the help of God. We will with the help of God. Do you teach her the way of Christ so that she may be led to profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? If so, answer, we will with the help of God. We will with the help of God. And do you promise by the grace of God to follow in the way of Jesus, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and patience and will and witness to the work and word of Jesus Christ as best as you are able? If so, answer we do with the help of God. We do with the help of God. And finally, do you promise?
promise, according to new grace given you to grow with her in the Christian faith, help her become a faithful member of the Church of Jesus Christ by celebrating Christ's presence, by furthering Christ's mission in all the world, and by offering the nurture of the Christian Church so that she may affirm her own baptism. If so, answer, we do with the help of God. We do with the help of God. Yeah. <laughs> She's ready. Because you're the star of the show. You know that. <laughs> the congregation, we will offer your assent to this. We are called through the Gospels and by the Spirit to live in the way of Christ, to spread the word of God, and to baptize those who seek grace and transformation. With Christians in all places and throughout time, we stand to witness and celebrate the baptism of Zoe Page Ashton, promising our love, support, care, and a blessing to her as she lives and grows in Christ. By what name shall we call her? Zoe Page, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We bow our heads. Heavenly Father, today we gather in a sense of celebration, celebrating a new life coming into the Christian church. We ask your blessing upon Zoe Page. We ask your blessing upon her parents and sponsors and the entire family that gathers here today, that she may grow, be nurtured, and come to witness her own faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We ask your blessing upon all of us and certainly the family who nurture her each and every day of our lives, of their lives. As we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, now we have the chance to, to sing the baptismal hymn as the parish are able to share her with all of us as they carry her around the, around the, around the church. one very, very good lesson, that is the only, only man she goes to is her father, which is a plus, right? <laughs> May we bow our heads in prayer. So we page, welcome to the family of, Je of Jesus, the family of the Church of Jesus Christ. We ask God's blessing upon you and upon her parents as they move through this remarkable time of their lives, that you would be with them each and every step. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. join me in the prayer for illumination. Holy God, as Jesus taught his disciples, so teach us as your word is read and proclaimed. Prepare our hearts to the first soil in which your truth may be planted deeply, watered frequently, and ours to the richly. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from Psalm 
verse 25, chapters 1 through 10. In you, Lord my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame, but shame will come upon those who are treacherous without cause. Show me the ways, your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are our God, my Savior, and my hope, in as long in as you all day long. Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from old. Do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you, God, are good. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in his ways. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful toward those who keep the demands of his covenant. The epistle reading is from 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 18 through 22. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteousness for the unrighteous to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. After being made alive, he went and made proclamation to those in the prison spirits, to those who were disobedient long ago when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. It only, in it only a few people, eight in all, were saved through water. And this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also. Not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience towards God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at right, God's right hand, with angels, authorities, and powers in submission to him. The Gospel reading is from Mark 1, chapters 9 through 15. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn apart and the Spirit descending upon him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love, and with you I am well pleased. And once the Spirit sent him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness forty days, being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals, and the angels attended him. After John was put in prison, Jesus went to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. May the good news be with us always, and go with us forth in our blessings.
Thank you, ladies. Elton John has contributed so many remarkable songs to, to the musical world, and what I came across this week began to think about is a song entitled Sad Songs. In fact, there's almost a parenthetic phrase at the end, sad songs, they, they say so much. And um, that's really what he believes. As he sings that song, he says these words, sad songs, they reach into your room. He asks us, just feel their, their gentle touch. You know, and I think we really know what he's talking about, don't we? But why in the world do we, we like sad songs? We like to listen to sad songs, but, but what is it about them that, that touches something deep within us? What is it about them that resonates with us? And um, Joshua Knob is a, uh, knows a rock musician, and he says her songs are, are remarkably sad. In fact, he was interviewed in the New York Times a while ago, and he said this, her music is packed with sorrow and heart-rending things that make people feel terrible. We wanted to say, one song is even the basis for a YouTube video talking about suicide. That's the theme of her music, he said. Then he added after that, you know, it's an approach that you might think would drag people down. Then he goes on to say, you know, oddly, the, the effect is, is really the opposite. Her, her music has tremendous value. She said that there's a, a, a surprising truth about sad music. One of those, that surprising truth is that, that they tend to make us feel good. Now, Knob is an experimental philosopher, and I have no idea what in the world an experimental philosopher is. It's a new term to me. He's also a psychologist, and uh, he's married to the musician who, who wrote those very sad songs, and he said this. He's found that, that experiencing someone's sadness can help us feel more, more connected. He said, you're, you're feeling isolated, you're feeling alone, you're, you're feeling sad, and then you have this experience. You, you listen to a song, you pick up a book, uh, and all of a sudden you feel as if you're not alone, you're not all by yourself. And I think that's really kind of true. Um, there are a lot of really sad songs that are popular. Rolling Stone did a poll about the top 10 sad songs of all time. And here are, here are five of them. One by Hank Williams, if you're a country and western fan. Uh, I'm So Lonesome, I Can Cry. That was a song that's been around since the 50s. Harry Chapin and Cats in the Cradle. And I think those of us who are parents can think about that song. R.E.M. had a song called Everybody Hurts. Uh, Hurt was a song by Nine Inch Nails. And then Eric Clapton, who's well familiar with the Lehigh Valley and certainly a big fan and consultant with Martin Guitar, wrote a song, Tears in Heaven, that talks about the tragic death of his son from a high rise apartment building in New York City. They're sad songs, they're sorrowful songs, but they're songs that, that we, we love to hear. And so I often wonder what in the world's going on inside of us that, that we like to hear these sad songs because nobody wants to be sad, we, but we enjoy art which tends to make us feel sad and that makes us feel better. There are lots of uh, theories about that. Uh, I, I went to the New York Times and they said this. He said, maybe we experience catharsis, a catharsis of negative emotions in the music. Uh, maybe there's an evolutionary advantage to it that we're, they were socially conditioned to appreciate our own suffering. Maybe our bodies produce hormones that uh, that create a feeling of, of consolation. And however you, you think about it, sad songs do make us feel good. And, and so on is true of this Psalm 25. The book of Psalms is the, is the hymn book, if you will, of the, of the, of the Jewish people. And some of, those, uh, some of those Psalms are really remarkably upright and exciting and full of praise. Some are more introspective and thoughtful, and then there are some that are they're, they're, they're downright sad. Uh, Psalm 25 is one of those that's really downright sad. It's, it's sorrowful. It's offered to God in the middle of what must have been remarkably challenging and difficult time for the songwriter. The psalm asks for guidance. It asks for deliverance. It speaks of, of enemies. It speaks of people who are treacherous. It reminds us of the sins of our youth and, and makes a point that we're all sinners. Psalm 25 is a remarkably sad song. and It is a song that in the words of Elton John really says, says so much to us. And I think the value of this song is that it's honest about the things that make all of us feel terrible. The song puts our trust in a God who's loving, who's merciful, who instructs sinners in the right way. It, it makes us feel good because it draws us closer to God, it draws us closer to, to each other. It begins with these powerful words, To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Do not let me be put to shame. Don't let my enemies exult over me. You know, 
in the face of what must have been serious threats from enemies, the psalm writer reaches out to God and says, lift up my soul. Uh, Mayor Eddie Picker, who's a philosopher at uh, Loyola University of Chicago, says this, our love of such music is not an appreciation of sadness, it's an appreciation of, of connection. And I think that focus on the connection is remarkably important for those of us in the Christian church who are connected to one another, connected to God, connected to Jesus Christ. Uh, I think it does raise some questions, though, as to, what, to whom are we connected? Are we connected to God, that higher power? Are we connected to our past selves? Are we connected to our, our future selves? Are we connected to the people around us in this sanctuary? And how do those connections help us and support us and, and give us courage? And Psalm 25 begins directly, and it says, it connects us to a higher power. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Lead me in your truth, and teach me, and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. In this sense, that the Lord is, is the God of our salvation, the one who has the power to, to save us and to rescue us from, from our sins, from our enemies, from our trouble, from illness. The God of salvation that, that provides us with a victory over danger and, and, and defeat and distress. And that higher power is also one that, that shows us mercy and steadfast love. The Hebrew word that's used in, 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 in this psalm is a word that doesn't translate remarkably well into English. It's a, it's a verb called hesed. It's a word that communicates a love that's significantly different than uh, romantic love, significantly different than sentimental love. Hesed is a love that's, that's a love of mercy and of kindness and loving kindness. And it's a steadfast love, a love that never goes away. There's a love of eagerness, of intention. It's remarkable that it's the choice that God makes to show us mercy. God makes to show us kindness. It's the decision that God makes to, to show us love. You know, whenever we sing this song, we're, we're connecting to the God of our salvation, the God of mercy, the God of steadfast love. It's a song that should make us feel good. It also is a song that connects us to our, our past lives. I love this line. Do not remember the sins of my youth and my transgressions, yeah, the lots of sins of my youth I'd love to forget. I'm sure that's true of all of us. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of your goodness, O oh Lord. Yeah, the sad songs I think that, that move us the most are, are those that, that are authentic, that are real, that we, we can feel honestly. They speak honestly of the sins of our youth. They speak honestly of our transgressions. And there are lots of them. Some we know well. Uh, I think of Blake Shelton's uh, I'm Sorry. Brian Adams' song, Please Forgive Me. I remember seeing Chicago at the, the uh, Allentown Fair, and they were singing, Hard to Say I'm Sorry. Even Madonna has a song called Sorry. You know, we connect to our past selves, to our sin, to our transgressions uh, through Psalm 25. We're asking for forgiveness. <coughs> well, forgiveness that only God can give us. We're confessing to this God that we know of, of steadfast love, the one who's chosen us to show us mercy and kindness. Our sadness over sin should be replaced by the joy of having all that guilt removed from our shoulders. It also connects us to our, to our future selves. The psalmist says this, Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He instructs us in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. When we're reading this psalm, we're singing this psalm, we're, we're asking to be given a new direction for our lives. We want God to show us the way to lead us in what is right. Our future with God involves moving us in a new direction, walking in the way of Christ. You, you may know that the, the first followers of Jesus Christ were, told, were called members of the way. It's a way of life that, that stood in, in, in incredible contradiction to the way of the world. The kingdom of God is everything backward. The kingdom of God is everything upside down. It tells us the last are first, the first are last. Blessed are the poor. The mighty shall be cast down from their thrones. The way of God offers us a, a new way to live our lives in the future. 
And then it also connects us to people around us. All these remarkable people who, who in fact, be the guides and the love and the concern for, for, for Zoe, are all connected together as family. We're all connected together through the family of Christ. The psalmist says this, All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his decrees. The Christian faith is telling us it's not an individual experience. It, it's, it's a shared experience. It takes place in the company of people who keep God's covenants and, and decrees. We think about that very first covenant that God had with, with Abraham. We'll talk about that next week in, in our Old Testament lesson. As Christians, we're covenant people. We're always connected to God. We're always connected to one another. Those connections help us by, by binding us together in the body of Christ. Paul writes this, The body does not consist of one member, but of many. Every member is valuable. Every talent is needed. Every person is needed to do God's work in the world. We especially need those connections when, when challenges come our way. Paul tells us this, If one member suffers, all suffer with it. If one member is honored, we will all rejoice together. Whether we're experiencing good times or bad times, we are connected as a family of Christ. Psalm 25 connects us to God. It connects us to our past selves. It connects us to our future selves. It connects us to the people around us. It strengthens the bonds that hold us together. It appoints us to the new covenant community known as the body of Christ. It's a sad song that can make us all feel so remarkably good. Amen. Would you please stand? Let's affirm our faith together. We believe in one God, Lord of heaven and earth. We believe that the gift of our salvation is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. We believe that God created heaven, that he lives and reigns there, and we will live with him when he one day calls us home. We live by faith, believing that what is unseen will one day be revealed to the glory of the one God and Lord of heaven, Jesus Christ. Amen. We continue our worship by singing our next hymn of worship.
As we bring our prayers before Heavenly Father this morning, let us remember to celebrate Zoe Page. Let us offer congratulations to Carl and Jill for the new born great grandson, Finnick and Samuel. Let us remember the, the daughter of um, our good friend John Motto, Victoria. We continue to remember John, Tom, and Shirley Adams. And certainly we keep uh, the family of Walter Gradwell in our prayers. We uh, also keep David and Kim Kibbets in the forefront of our minds. May we bow our heads. From the beginning, there was beauty in the ordinary and splendor in the commonplace. Each grain of sand, each willowy feather, they all carried the mark of your touch, O creating God. Strike a rock, and the river of light nourishes doubting hearts. Tap a tree, and sweetness flows to ease winter burdens. In our world, where we often ignore the common and pass by the ordinary, you said Jesus. He showed us how to tap our experiences so we might see God's blessing in lost coins, in widow's mites, in narrow doors, and mustard seeds. He leads us in Lent to take on acts of charity develop eyes to see the holy and the ordinary. Jesus walks with us as we let go of sin and separation. Holy and wondrous are you, God, O oh God, revealing the wonder in the ordinary and shaping ourselves to disclose glory. Amen. May we pray together the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Would you please stand for offertory prayer, followed by the doxology. In response to your great love for us, gracious God, we joyfully and gratefully offer the fruits of our labor and of our lives in these gifts. Bless and multiply them, we pray, that the transformative power of your love will be a reality in our neighborhood and community. Amen. Returning to a, a more traditional form of communion this morning, and so we will be passing bread and, and wine separately. There are in the uh, bread trays uh, separate cups for those of you who would rather have grape juice and might not want to participate in the common meal. But indeed, uh, we will be celebrating communion in a more traditional form in our church. You may sing our communion hymn, let us break bread together.
This is the joyful feast of the people of God. Men and women, youth and children, come from the east and come from the west, from the north and the south, and gather around Christ's table. This table is for all Christians who wish to know the presence of Christ and to share in the community of God's people. So God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. May we bow our heads. We give you thanks, God of majesty and mercy, for calling forth creation and raising us from the dust by the breath of your being. We bless you for the beauty and the bounty of the earth and for the vision of the day when sharing by all will mean scarcity for none. Remember the covenant you made with your people Israel and give you thanks for all of our ancestors in faith. We rejoice that you call us to reconciliation with you and all people, all people everywhere, and that you remain faithful to your covenant even when we are faithless. We rejoice that you call the entire human family to this table of sacrifice and victory. We come to remembrance of and celebration of the gift of Jesus Christ, whom you sent in the fullness of time to be the good news. Born of Mary, our sister in faith, Christ lived among us to reveal the mystery of your word, to suffer and die on the cross for us, to be raised from the third day, and then to live in glory. We bless you, gracious God, for the presence of your Holy Spirit in the church that you have gathered. Your sons and daughters of faith in all places and times we praise you with joy. Holy, holy, holy God of love and majesty, the whole universe speaks of your glory, O God most high. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God, Hosanna in the heights. We remember that on the night of betrayal and desertion, and on the very eve of death, Jesus gathered his disciples for the feast of Passover. And Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks to you, broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And therefore, we proclaim the mystery of our faith. That Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Eternal God, we unite in this covenant of faith, recalling Christ's suffering and death, and rejoicing in Christ's resurrection and awaiting Christ's return in victory. We spread your table with these gifts of the earth and of our labor. We present to you our very lives committed to your service on behalf of all people. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit on this bread and this wine, on our gifts and upon us. Strengthen your universal church that it may be a champion of peace and justice in the world. Restore the earth with your grace that is able to make all things new. Be present with us as we share this meal and throughout our lives, that we may know you as the Holy One, who with Christ and the Holy Spirit lives forever. The bread which we break is the communion of the body of Christ. And the cup of blessing which we bless is the communion of the blood of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. These are indeed the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, for all things are ready.
Take any. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ is broken for us all. Take and drink the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ shed for us all. Okay, we'll bow our heads in prayer for a prayer of thanksgiving. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the gift of our Savior's presence and the simplicity and splendor of this holy meal. Unite us with all who are fed by Christ's body and blood, who we may faithfully proclaim the good news of your love that your universal church may be a rainbow of hope in an uncertain world. Through Christ our Redeemer. Amen. We're concluding him, concluding him of worship is number 18, Guide Me, O Great Jehovah.
have begun. May we be witnesses to these days when Jesus calls us again to ministry and discipleship. May our Lenten travels be for us and for the world a sign of Christ's love for all humankind. Amen. Thank you.